Have you ever wanted to pull a squirrel out of your flash? Today, I'm gonna show you how. That one was for you, Les. It goes out to you, I know you're Carl's biggest fan. I'd like to thank the good folks at Skillshare for sponsoring this video, so let's jump into this. Today on Behind the Scenes, I am gonna be walking you all through this photo. The thought process that went behind it, the gear that I used for it, and a few extra little pictures that I shot right after this. When I go out and work on personal work, I take everything with me as though it's a commercial job. For this shoot with my friend Lee, here's the back of my car when I rolled up uh, to her house. Now, she had just packed everything she owned into a moving van and was about to move across the country. And that was kind of why we set up the shoot. It was like, oh my God, you're leaving. Like, let's do a shoot before you go. Lee and I have been friends for well over a decade. She's an awesome photographer herself. And uh, so she was completely down for that. I had my bag of cameras in there. That's usually gonna be my phase one and my Fuji X-Pro2 and a Fuji X100. I've got my tripod, my bag of lights. We've got this uh, big smoke machine. I like to have a little atmospheric stuff around. I had it on hand just in case. And I've got my big five by seven background that collapses. I also have a couple other small reflectors and scrims. This is my big 48 inch lightwear case and that's got pretty much all of my light modifiers, my Octas, soft lighter. It's got a couple small background stands in it, umbrellas, things like that. I've got a couple sandbags in there. I brought a chair because I know that like all of her furniture was backed up. Uh, there's a various number of C stands and light stands back in there. I also raided the wardrobe closet that is in my studio and picked out a couple of items for Lee to wear. Again, knowing her entire life was packed up in a truck at that moment. So I got to Lee's house and walked all around and went through every room from the kitchen to the bathroom, to the bedrooms, to the living room and all of that. There was a lot of texture to the place and I kind of dug this hallway. I'm like, all right, I like the leading lines of it. There's this fabric hanging that I can do something with and that can be a decent background. So I grabbed my little chair, put that in there and started to build a picture. Where I've been getting inspiration for lighting lately is just how light falls naturally in a space. So if you look at this picture here, it's like early morning sunlight coming through the blinds and that direct light from the sun is really warm and it's also kind of hard, but all the rest of the light in the room is kind of cool because it's like open shade. So you have this mixture of colors going on. Take a look at this light that was in my kitchen just this morning. I go downstairs, I'm getting my coffee, and the light from the morning sun is coming through the windows. And I'm just, I just love this light. I love this mixture of like a hard light and the softness of the fill of all the rest of the light going on in the room. But what's really interesting to me is when you start to bring that exposure down and you're just exposing for those highlights, it gets really dramatic and really cool looking. I also really like how sunlight plays through trees and leaves and then hits glass and creates these very hard, bright reflections. Like this is just the light that's hitting the back door in my kitchen. I love the mixture of, look how soft those leaf shadows are that are moving. And then that hard line of light that's coming from light reflecting off glass. So I look at light like that and I'm, and I'm like, how can I start to replicate that? Because the problem with being a portrait photographer is you see this amazing light right then and there in that moment, but you have no one to put in front of it. You have no one to place in that light. So I make little mental notes of like, I really dug how that light looked, how it maybe bounced off of the floor and up to the ceiling. Maybe that's something I can play with. I can, I can take a light and hit it on a floor and then see what that looks like bouncing up somewhere else. But there's lots of this like hard light with a soft fill. So that's what I decided I was gonna try with this shoot with my friend Lee. So here's my lighting setup. 
The first thing I have set up is a really large soft lighter. It's about a 60 inch soft lighter. A soft lighter is basically an umbrella with a diffusion material across the front. It's kind of like a round, flat faced soft box. I just needed a soft light. This could have been a shoot through umbrella, a reflective umbrella. It could have been a big soft box. Didn't have to be a soft lighter. Sitting in front of my big soft lighter was this Fotix Metros Plus flash. This is the flash I've been using these days. And I decided I was gonna add about a half or a full CTO gel to that. I used the MagMod system for grids and gels and things like that for my hot shoe flash. So I have this warming gel. I think, I think it was half CTO, full CTO, somewhere in that range. That sticks onto the front of my flash like that with magnets, pretty ingenious. And then I use the mag beam. This is most likely my favorite hot shoe flash accessory. I love this thing. So this focuses the light coming out of the flash and it will project whatever little gobo you put here. They have several different kinds of shapes and forms and dappled things that you can put into a mag beam and it's going to project that onto your subject. So this flash is sitting in front of the soft lighter. My idea for the light would be to have a big wash of soft light that was running at daylight temperature and then have a little beam of hard light going right with it that was gonna be running at a different color temperature. I believe it was Gregory Heisler that said, white light is a lie, meaning there's never perfect, complete, matched light wherever you go out into the world. Wherever you walk out, there's gonna be different color temperatures of light. And me being a very technical, technical, technical person is I want all my light sources to match. A big thing for me to do is to let go of that, let go of everything must be correct and start to mix color temperatures of lights. So here's the uh, kind of side view look at it. You can see my hot shoe flash like going in there and then you've got my soft lighter chasing it. You got a hard crunchy light going right down the middle and a soft chewy light kind of chasing behind it. My goal in my head for this was that the little beam of light coming from the mag beam was gonna be my main light and then the big soft lighter was gonna be the fill. So I knew that my main light, that strip of light that was gonna be hitting Lee, needed to be brighter than the big soft lighter coming in behind. Again, here is the place I decided to shoot. Then I set up a camera, set up lights, and this is my first test shot. The first thing that I can tell that's wrong with this is that my fill light, that big soft lighter, is just too bright. The power is up too much. So I dialed that power down and it started to look like this. And this is just raw, straight from camera. I'm shooting with about a 35 millimeter equivalent lens. We've got the hot shoe flash with the mag beam on Lee, followed by a Fotix Indra with the fill light from the soft lighter. And then I had a hot shoe flash that I was simply just holding from camera position, bouncing it into the ceiling above to bring a little bit of light down in the hallway because the foreground was like, just getting too dark. But I wasn't happy with this flash filling in just white light. I wanted to change that up a bit more. So I cycled through a couple of different colored gels. I tried a green gel, I tried a blue gel, and I finally settled on this lavender gel. And you can see here the blue and bringing the power up. It was just too bright, it was too much. I wanted it to be really subtle. So I finally got it looking like this. There's this kind of bluish green cast to the hallway. My thought process was like, you know, in films when someone's like at a cheap motel or something like that, there's always gonna be these like fluorescent or neon signs or something like that, always giving a kind of greenish, bluish, sort of weird cast to the color of a place. So that was kind of part of my thought process. I wanted the light to have a feeling of either being early in the morning or late in the afternoon, and maybe a door was kind of open and that last bit of sun or the first light of the sun coming in was just making this little beam of light on Lee 
And then the cool kind of just fill light that's around in a room early in the morning or late in the afternoon is filling up the rest of the place. And then there's just this little bit extra of a grungy, greeny, bluish something kind of light just sort of glowing. So just again, this light right in here, that's coming from the mag beam with this little strip gobo in it. You see this soft feathered light right here. That's coming from the soft lighter. That's also all of this light on this curtain that's hanging up. That's from the soft lighter. And this light that's just hitting Lee here and here, that's from the mag beam. And it's overpowering the light that's coming from that soft lighter. And then this soft little glow here on the walls and adding just a smidge of fill probably right in here on Lee is from that handheld flash that I'm just holding from camera position, bouncing it into the ceiling at a really low power setting. It was probably something like 32nd power or 64th power. I know my Fotix Indra on the soft lighter, that was only sitting at 64th power. I can't exactly remember what the uh, mag beam power was set to, but it probably was somewhere in the, you know, eighth to quarter power range, I would imagine. Let me show you a couple other pictures I took on my shoot with Lee. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor. I'd really like to thank the good folks at Skillshare for sponsoring this video today. Skillshare has thousands of classes for creative and curious people. You can take classes in design and photography, video, business, and cooking. I really dig the cooking classes on Skillshare. Members get unlimited access to thousands of classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions of people. Y'all, I mean, you can take a class with Aaron Draplin. He is a hero to me. I am not even a designer and I soak up anything that man does. And he's got classes on Skillshare. If you click on my link below for Skillshare, the first thousand of you who sign up will get two months of premium access for free. Two months free, thousands of classes. Two months premium, thousand of you. How awesome is that? So thank you, Skillshare. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you. Let's get back to the pictures. Where were we? So when I was done shooting with the chair, I had some time. Lee still had some time. I was like, let's just kind of play. And with these personal project pictures, it's a time to try things out. Things are gonna work, things are gonna not work. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna suck. And that's okay, because I'm getting to work. If you go watch my Burnout 2 video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Get to work, right? So I'm just getting to work. So I'm like, okay, Lee, um, you know, uh, what else can we do? Uh, I rarely, if ever, have anyone just lie on a floor. So uh, do you mind lying on the floor here in your hallway? And she's like, I'm down for whatever. So, uh, so she lays down in the hallway. So to start shooting, I kept the soft lighter on and I just grabbed the light that was on the stand that had the mag beam on it. And I took the little gobo out, took that out, and decided to just try shooting with this. All of these pictures I was shooting tethered to my laptop. So I put a sandbag down on the floor and then I put my camera on that. So, because my tripod would not get low enough. And so my camera could stay low, but it was still stable sitting on that sandbag. And then I just started taking pictures while holding my flash at different places. And I kept that CTO gel in there and I white balanced to that. And you can tell at the color of the light, that background is kind of bluish and cool in tone because it's sitting at 5,000 something Kelvin. The light on her looks fairly neutral because I was balancing to tungsten because that CTO gel that I had on this was giving me basically a tungsten color balance. So yeah, so that light on her is just, the camera's down low, I'm sitting on the ground, I'm pushing the shutter release and trying the light at different places. Then I set up another light. I thought, okay, let me try something different. I grabbed another hot shoe flash. I put a little grid on it. Again, a mag, mag mod, mag grid thing on that. And put it on a stand down at the end of the hallway to give 
you don't know, some kind of like little rim light or something like that. Played around with that. I also played around with focusing and unfocusing this mag beam, which can give some interesting kind of shape and look to the light. If you look at her arm there on camera left, you see this little bit of glow around her elbow. That's because this light is kind of going out and there's these little odd bits of light that are on the edges of it when it's set up like this. Tried it in black and white, I kind of liked that. For this picture, I just basically took my flash that had the mag beam, slightly defocused, and I just put it on the ground and pointed it at Lee. That is the light that's hitting her here and here. And notice that little arc of light right there. That's also coming from this mag beam. This light here and here and here is coming from that light that's on the stand that has the grid on it that we saw earlier in the picture. It's coming from that light, just giving a little bit of fill and a little separation and a little bit of rim light. The happy accident that happened on this shoot was I was in Capture One looking at the picture. I thought I was on my selection cursor, but I was actually on the rotate cursor. I had forgotten to turn that off. And I ended up clicking on this picture a couple of times and rotated it. And I liked it so much more. So here's how I shot it, right? That's her laying on the ground. I'm kind of standing, you know, above her at shooting down towards her, but rotated, it still seems upright somehow, but it's off just enough that you can't quite put your finger on it because it doesn't really look upside down, but it doesn't look upside right either. It just sort of works. And again, this just comes out of getting to work. Get to work. Things will occur to you. Some things you'll reject and some things will push you in a new direction. So now there are times when I'm shooting at something that's kind of an off angle. I sit there and rotate the picture and I look at it you know, vertically. If I shot it horizontally, I turn it upside down. I'll flip it 180 degrees sometimes. I never would have thought to do that kind of thing before. I'm always stuck in this like narrow technical, this is how photography must be done box. And I have to get out of this stupid box. I can't, I don't want to live in this box anymore. Now there are times when it is called for to be in that box. In fact, I would say most of the work that I get is because I live in that box. I'm very technical, I get things dialed down, I can work quickly, I can work under pressure because I know the technical limitations of photography and lighting and I can make things happen in a short amount of time. That's great, but I'm stuck there. I don't think to do it like this. I don't have time to play. I don't have time to try things new. And that is where personal projects come into play. You get to have the time to do the stuff that you never normally get to do. So yeah, so that's it. Uh, that, that's my shot looking at sunlight coming through the, my house and trying to figure it out. And honestly, I really feel like this picture is a rough draft. I feel like this kind of work is sort of my sketchbook, that this isn't the final piece. And as I show you more of my personal work in upcoming videos, I'm going to point out where I feel like this is a work in progress. It's putting me towards something. It's setting something in motion for me that I'm not there yet. I haven't arrived. I'm still on this very long plateau, but I'm trying new stuff. I'm enjoying the process. I don't hate photography anymore. Like I'm falling in love with the camera again and with the process and with making pictures and I'm looking forward to doing more. And that is what is key in my life. That is what I need to keep me going. So that's it for this uh, shoot and share, show and tell, behind the scenes. Should I wanna do several of these videos. Do y'all have a good name for this? What should it be called? Should it be called show and tell? Should it be called shoot and tell? Should be shoot and share? Should it be called just BTS, behind the scenes? Um, I really don't know. I, I, I want to name this something and make a playlist and call it something. Please subscribe. Please share. Please like. Give me a thumbs up. 
And always, I read all of your comments and I always love your feedback and your critique and your ideas. So please hit me up in the comment and please go click that Skillshare link. Get yourself two free months of premium membership, y'all. Take some classes, learn a new skill. Thank you, everyone. There's a squirrel in my flash.